Hello, beloved ones. Reverend Beth Simmons here with a special Thanksgiving midweek moment. Special Thanksgiving slash stewardship midweek moment. Um, I missed you all last week when I was on vacation and missed those of you who were in worship on Sunday when I was uh, got a bonus uh, day away because um, we had lots of sickness in my home, um, but um, so I heard that Amy did a wonderful job uh, sharing some thoughts on the parable of the talents, and um, and she did not post those because they were not hers, uh, her thoughts. Um, they came from Sermon Seeds, uh, which is a UCC publication, so um, so that's why we didn't share them, because they were not original thoughts. Um, but I wanted to just take a moment. Um, this coming Sunday is what we call Stewardship Sunday, the Sunday where we gather in our pledges of financial support for the coming year. Pardon me, my allergies are a little bit uh, haywire today. Um, and I've been thinking about that opportunity in conjunction with that parable from this past Sunday. So if you don't know the parable of the talents, um, this is comes at the end of Jesus's ministry. He is describing the end of times and what what that might be like describing in sharing stories about the end of times how we are to live in the now times. And so he tells a story about a man who goes away and he leaves his servants, his slaves in some translations, and he gives uh, each servant according to their ability. And so he gives one five talents, so a monetary amount. He gives another two and another one. And the one with five talents goes out and invests it and uh, reaps the reward of another five talents. So the second one goes out, invests the two and gets two more back. And the third one takes the one and buries it, and does nothing with it. And so when the, the master returns, he calls to account his servants. And the one with the, the first one says, here I have gone out and I have done these things and now I have come back with 10. And the master says, ah, well, well done good and trustworthy servant, you shall uh, reap the rewards and, and live in your master's delight. Again, I'm paraphrasing. The same happens with the second. He says, oh, look, I have invested. I've done well with your two talents. I have come back with four talents. And the response from the master is the same. And the third, he says, I knew that you reaped what you did not sow, and I was afraid. And so I buried my talent and I hid it, and here is your one talent back. And the master says, oh, you, you knew this about me, did you? Well, you have done this with that which is not yours. And give his take his one talent, give it to the one with 10 talents. <coughs> and as for the servant, throw him out into the darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And at first glance, it seems like this is the antithesis of the gospel message. Oh, and he says, because those who have much, more will be given. And to those who have little, even what they have will be taken away. And this, it just doesn't seem like a message Jesus would normally give. Jesus is all about giving to the poor and taking care of the children and the widows and and, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they will inherit the kingdom of heaven. And, 
and and all that right this is just this is about jesus and yet in this message she says something what seems on the surface to be completely different but i think the issue with the third servant is not that he was only given a little and so so they'll you know, just take it away and that's to happen so we you know the poor in the world even what they have will be taken away and so the rich will continue to have even more although sometimes it seems like that this isn't really about money at all it's really about acknowledging one that we have something right practicing gratitude giving thanks for what we have and two recognizing that we possess We own nothing. All that we have has been gifted to us. It's, it's not ours. The land, the tree, the skies, the money, the food. It's not ours to hold on to, to bury and keep for ourselves and decide. But it is something that we're offered and given a choice on how to act with it. So here's where this connects with stewardship. We base our bet, our budget every year on pledges. And we go in and we try to make the numbers work. We have two historical buildings. One of them is half owned by the town and so we get assistance and thank goodness for that that we share that responsibility because we probably wouldn't be financially solvent if that were not the case, which just happens to many churches with historical buildings. We have me. Uh, I'm probably, I guess, aside from the vestry, <laughs> the basic, bis, basic, biggest expense that the church has, right? A pastor uh, with a salary. Um, and we have the ministries of the church. We have Sunday school. We have uh, our child sponsor. Sponsor. We have um, other ministries. Um, and they cost money. And we want to be able to be present and to do new and innovative things and reach out to the community. And we can't do that if we look at our budget and the numbers don't match up. This past year, we did something that's been done in the past, which is called faith-based budgeting. And basically, we took, took the, uh, the, the amount that remained, the difference between the proposed budget or the necessary minimum, pretty much, budget and the amount of the pledges. And we said, okay, well, we're going to have faith that somehow this money is going to come up. And then every month, we ask for offering to fill that budget space. And I haven't looked at the numbers this year, but generally, historically, this works. I would like to not have to use that budget line this year. I would like to encourage you, even if you've already looked at your pledge and you've already decided, I want you to take a moment to study it again. And if you haven't yet, after, tomorrow, after Thanksgiving, um, take some time, even if it means that you don't get your pledge in on Sunday and it takes another week or two weeks, you know, get, I mean, get it in, you know, as soon as possible. But if you, I want you to take real time and look at what you can give to the church, remembering that what you have in your bank account is not yours in the first place. And that by offering it out and investing it, it can be, it can grow and expand. Could you increase your pledge this year? If you've never pledged, have at it. But if you have, if you historically pledge, could you increase? And I know inflation is horrible. Grocery prices are through the roof. Lots of us 
in our congregation are on fixed incomes. Totally get that. But if 20 people or households increase their pledge by $1 per week, 20 people, 20 times 52, that's a good chunk. What if you increased it $2? $5? What if you, let's think of one, one, you are one person, you, one person can make a difference. Increase it by $1 a month. Increase it by $100 a year. Increase it $1,000 a year. Consider how much you usually give on those faith-based offering Sundays. Could you just add that in? your monthly pledge if you forget sometimes and have to catch up and it gets really hard could you set up automatic giving I did that this year through Tidely and it has made all the difference I met not missed the pledge once because it just even when I'm on vacation away it automatically deducts it just like Netflix and Spotify and any other services we have and propane Could you bump your pledge up by 1%? Could you edge a little bit closer to giving 10% of your income? Maybe not. But I would like to encourage you to stretch yourself a little bit. Not so that it's painful, but so that you notice it. And then I'm going to have a challenge for the congregation this Sunday based on our next parable featuring sheep and goats. But first, I want you to really, really sit with God. Write it down if you need to. Prayer, how much should I give God? There's my finances. Here's my monthly. Do whatever. Take a walk outside. See what comes to you. Look at your bank account. Just... Hold your pledge card in your hand. Whatever you need to do to sort of discern the Spirit's movement and what you can pledge this year. And listen. And try not to be shocked or afraid. That third servant, he said that, I was afraid. It did not go well for him. How much of an increase, how much abundance showed forth when we actually used our talents? Just a thought. As we center on gratitude this week, we offer thanks for all the blessings in our lives. Sometimes they may be small blessings if we're in a time of struggle or shadow. And sometimes it would take us days to list them all. I hope you're at, that's on that second part. And that wherever you are and whoever you're with, whether it's surrounded by a joyful connected family or you're in a place where that seems like a far off dream I hope that you remember how deeply loved you are by God and by me happy Thanksgiving everyone <laughs>